I saw a couple of interesting videos on Twitter that I'd like to talk about today. The first one is a container of nails getting shaken. It takes a minute, but something interesting happens. I checked out the comments, and a lot of people claimed that this video was reversed in time. They probably learned about entropy, that a system tends to go from a more ordered state to a more disordered state, which is the opposite of what happens here. The nails seem to magically start aligning with each other until they're all pointing in pretty much the same direction. But entropy tending to increase only applies to closed systems. And here, a person is jostling the box, and he's burning calories to do that, which increases the entropy overall. A scientist might say that the local entropy is going down, even though the global entropy, the total entropy of the universe, is going up as it has to, according to the second law of thermodynamics. So why does this organization occur, you might say, spontaneously? When the nails are all mixed up, there's space between them. The ones at the top are higher up in the container than they would be if some of the space were removed. In Newtonian terms, they have higher gravitational potential energy, and the person is shaking the energy out of them the way an earthquake shakes the potential energy out of a building. Each nail is seeking a state of lowest energy, the way that a coiled spring wants to uncoil or a stick of dynamite wants to explode. So why do the nails end up oriented in one direction, specifically this direction? The shaking seems to be mostly left and right while the container is rolled along the same axis. The torque on each nail due to impact forces is roughly proportional to the sine of the angle that the nail makes with the left-right axis. Perpendicular nails quickly get knocked closer to parallel, while parallel nails are less likely to get knocked out of parallel. Meanwhile, the nails that are close to parallel roll as the container tilts, further aligning them along that left-right axis kind of like how this cardboard tube wants to roll straight downhill. Eventually, all of the nails go parallel. The space between them is smallest when they're all lined up, which further reduces their potential energy. If the shaking were much more violent to where you were throwing the nails up into the air, then you couldn't shake the potential energy out of them, because you're actually putting potential energy into them, especially if they started out all lined up at the bottom of the container. That's analogous to how crystals, like ice crystals, can't form if there's too much heat. Often there's an energetic maximum only below which this kind of self-organization occurs. The second video is of a device I wish I had invented. It's a gear reduction system with 100 gears, each at a 10 to 1 gear ratio. That means it demonstrates the number Google, 10 to the power of 100, a one with a hundred zeros after it. It would take a Google number of rotations of the first gear to make the last gear rotate just once. That's more than the number of atoms in the known universe. I love large numbers because the human brain just isn't set up to comprehend them. But this device gives you a way to comprehend that enormous number, Google, right there on a tabletop. This book called One Million uses a different approach to illustrating large numbers. Basically, it has a million dots in it, with various numbers called out like the number of casualties in the Civil War. So this is a million. It's a lot. A billion is the number of dots in a thousand of these books. And a trillion is the number of dots if you had as many books as there are dots in each book. Now take a trillion up 88 more orders of magnitude and you'd have a Google. Spend some time contemplating large numbers. It'll help you appreciate what tiny, insignificant pissants we all are.